Well, welcome once again. Uh, really glad that you're here with us, whether you're here in person or watching uh, online or listening. We're excited about what God's doing through this class. And in the last session, I kind of gave a little bit of an introduction and a review, and I won't do too much of that uh, uh, today with this session. But this is session eight. Again, we have 10 sessions, so two more after this one. Uh, this is session eight called Holy Spirit-Led Prayer. Uh, if you'll recall, I said last in the last session that uh, you know, we had the four themes, that we prayer themes that we talked about. And then in the last session, we began to shift to principles. In the last session, we talked about uh, how to engage in spiritual warfare effectively and safely. And in this session... We're going, to lead, we're going to deal with Holy Spirit-led prayer, to be led by the Holy Spirit uh, as we pray. You, you can imagine, um, we, you know, when you begin to think about these four prayer themes, uh, praying for the corporate man to arise, uh, resisting the spirit of uh, the great harlot and the spirit of the queen of heaven and restraining the spirit of Antichrist and praying for Israel, there comes, becomes a multitude of topics that kind of arise out of that. I mean, there's not, uh, it's not just something you can just pray, you know, four prayers and cover all of them. It's a multitude of prayer topics. And so we have to be led by the Holy Spirit as to what's on his heart. You know, whether it's individual prayer or whether we're gathering in a corporate group, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. As to what, Lord, what are you putting on our hearts for this prayer session or for uh, my prayer time, whatever it may be. What, what's on your heart? What am I to pray? Uh, otherwise, you would just be beating at the air, and, you know, we're not to do that. We are to uh, just to, to pray with laser focus as to what and how God would have us uh, to pray. So that's one of the objectives of this session. And the other objective is I want to... I want to demystify being led in, by the Holy Spirit and to pray by, as led by the Holy Spirit. Because I, I just sense that just from, from some of our groups that some people are, they're almost afraid to open their mouth because they don't, they haven't heard God speak as to what to pray into and what the topics are. Now there are other reasons probably as well, but that's I think one of the reasons. So I want to I want to share in a way where people don't feel like they have to hear an audible voice from God uh, or an angelic encounter, an angel coming and seeing them, to be able to pray as led by the Spirit. There are a lot of ways uh, that are just more natural, I mean, more normal life ways of praying. So two objectives. One is to learn how to pray by the Spirit. Uh, and secondly... Uh, to kind of free people so that they can, they know uh, that they can pray by the Spirit without having to to really hear something directly from the Lord. So, uh, so anyway, with that introduction, let's pray. Let me uh, have an opening prayer, and then we'll get right into it. Uh, Father, we do thank you for again for this group. We thank you for all that you are doing, your anointing upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you're raising up a mighty army around the earth, a mighty prayer army around the earth to pray into God's eternal purposes and to fill the golden bowls of incense. We say to you, Lord, that we want to be a part of that. Our desire is to be a part of that. And so we so choose to say that we want to be a part of all that you're doing uh, in uh, in the earth as it relates to prayer. So anoint us again. I pray that you would take me out of the way. That you would be a uh, that I would merely be a voice for your spirit to hit on the things that are important, uh, and that you would pour out your anointing there in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen and amen. Uh, okay. Uh, again, session eight. Holy Spirit uh, led prayer. Um, so they're, they're basically, this is kind of my take on it, they're basically four ways we are motivated to pray uh, into an issue. And, and really, in one sense, all of these are led by the Spirit, but we would maybe not think of them as Spirit-led prayers. But they're, they're basically four ways that we are motivated to pray. The first one is we pray because the Bible tells us to pray. 
Uh, you know, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, uh, familiar verse of Scripture. Uh, this is actually verse uh, 2. Uh, no, verse 1. Uh, first of all, then, I urge that the entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we can lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between man uh, God, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. And it goes on. But, you know, we see we're called, just the Bible tells us to pray. And, of course, there are many other scriptures that call us to pray uh, for a whole variety of topics, to pray for ourselves, to pray for our daily needs, our, our, uh, for the kingdom to come, uh, for uh, protection against temptation, uh, to pray for our family, our children, our wife, uh, all of the various things that, that, that are there. The Bible tells us to pray for these things and we need uh, to do this. That's the first way. The second way is to pray when we see a need. Uh, you know, Jesus would, would see a need, and it's all throughout the, the Gospels. He would see a need and compassion would come upon him and that compassion would lead him to pray for him or to, and, uh, or to minister to him is what he did primarily, I guess. Uh, but it would lead us to pray. There are many times we'll see a need and just your, your heart breaks over the situation uh, that somebody is encountering. And what does it do? It motivates you. It makes you, you know, you can't, sometimes there are situations you can't do anything about other than pray. When I say other than, that's the most important thing we can do, but to pray. And so compassion will lead us uh, to prayer uh, as well. So that's the second way. The third way yeah, it was when somebody asked you to pray. And I'm sure for all of us, we get asked to pray on a fairly regular basis, to pray for, pray for me. I, my, I'm sick or pray for me. This situation has come up in my family. Pray for me for this or for that. And of course, probably none of us pray for everything that we're asked to. Sometimes there's a, a sense that we don't feel any uh, call to pray into that. But most of the time we do, you know, a lot of the times we do. And so we pray. So that's the third way is that when somebody asks us to pray, uh, we, we pray. Jesus did this uh, when, they, when people ask him to minister, not always, but, but a lot of times he did pray. And the fourth way, way uh, is that we are, when we are motivated to pray, uh, into an issue or a specific direction about an issue as the Holy Spirit leads us to pray. That's what we want to really focus on uh, in this session, as the Holy Spirit leads. Uh, in Ephesians 6, 18 and 19, we dealt with that in the last session, uh, it says this, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints and pray on my behalf that the utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known the bold, with boldness the mystery of the gospel. So it says here to pray at all times in the spirit. And now we'll, we'll deal with at all times in, in, a, in a minute. Uh, but we're to pray as led by the Holy Spirit uh, when God so anoints and calls us uh, to do that. So that's what we really want to cover in this session. Uh, I want to say this as we begin. Praying in the Holy Spirit is more than just praying in tongues. Now, praying in tongues is a major way that we pray as led by the Holy Spirit, but is by far not the only way that we pray in the Spirit. And as we go through this session, I think you'll see that. It is definitely a way that we pray in the Holy Spirit. You know, when I first, uh, not came to the Lord so much, but when I first began to be interested in the charismatic expression of uh, a walk with the Lord years and years ago, I thought praying in the Spirit and praying in tongues were the, was the same thing. Uh, and, you know, you'd read passages like uh, the, like Jude uh, who said, you know, just uh, to, to strengthen yourself by praying in the Spirit. Now, in Jude, it might be, 
he might have been referring to praying in tongues because that definitely uh, has an impact uh, upon our encour you know, encouraging us and lifting us up and all that when we pray in tongues. But praying in the Spirit and praying in tongues are, are not you know, synonymous. Praying in the Spirit includes praying in tongues, but there are other things uh, that uh, it includes. So what is, let me just define it. What is praying in the Spirit? Praying in the Spirit, uh, or is led by the Holy Spirit, is in fact um, praying, uh, let me see where the definition here, praying as the Holy Spirit prompts us to pray. In other words, we pray what God puts in our heart. That's what the Holy Spirit, praying by the Spirit, praying in agreement with what's on the heart of the, of the Holy Spirit. That's kind of what we're talking about uh, here. Um, so praying, Holy Spirit-led prayer is praying uh, what we sense the Holy Spirit leading us to do. Here's the definition again. Uh, our simple definition is praying what we sense the Holy Spirit leading us to pray. That's a, it's a very simple definition, but I think that's effective, as effective as anything in terms of a, of a prayer uh, definition. Now, uh, we're going we're gonna to deal in a, in a few minutes with 11 different ways we can, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit will, impro will motivate us to pray as led by the Holy Spirit. So there are a lot of different techniques or things, ways, but I want to deal with this, with the lifestyle leading to spirit-led prayer first. Um, this is so, so important. Um, Holy Spirit-led prayer flows easily from a lifestyle where we are being led by the Holy Spirit. A lifestyle led by the Holy Spirit is the result of, a, of an ongoing daily relationship with Christ. So he, he, this is really important. You, you know, I think one reason why some people uh, don't, some believers don't really, aren't really able to pray as led by the Spirit and to discern what the Spirit is saying is that they aren't walking with the Holy Spirit. They aren't walking with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis and they don't have a deep and an abiding relationship with Christ. And so they come into a prayer meeting uh, and they don't have this ongoing relationship uh, with Christ or, or with, uh, with the indwelling Christ, and the Holy, which is the Holy Spirit. And therefore, when it comes up, they, they're not in tune with the Spirit. Their spirit man has not been nurtured and it doesn't rise up as much as those who have a really deep walk with the Lord. And so this, this whole issue uh, of a lifestyle leading to spirit-led prayer is so important. Uh, and if we want to really be led by the Holy Spirit uh, and, and connect with Him, it comes down to uh, the need to, uh, to be led by the Holy Spirit and, and to have a relationship, an ongoing deep relationship with Christ uh, that consists of uh, obedience, uh, laying down our life for the, for the Lord, uh, meditating on the scriptures, reading the scriptures, studying the scriptures, private worship and prayer, and an ongoing, you know, daily walk uh, with the Lord. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about different aspects of walking or being led by the Holy Spirit, or I'll just say, uh, come from a spirit-led life. What are some of the things? The scriptures are filled with, uh, with different aspects of what's involved in a spirit-led life, and these are in your notes. But I'm, so I'm going to read them real quick. Uh, but you can look and uh, you can look at the references that are in the notes. Uh, John three. Uh, five through seven. Truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So first, obviously, to be led, to be uh, have a Spirit-led life, we have to be born of the Spirit. Uh, Mark 1, 8, we have to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We don't have to be, but it's certainly helpful to be baptized by the Holy Spirit in the Holy Spirit. 
uh, Romans 12, 11, not lagging behind in diligence, be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So there's a fervency in our walk with the Lord in terms of the spirit. Uh, Galatians 5, 25, if we live by the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. So walking in a daily connection relationship with the Holy Spirit. Galatians 6, 8, and 9, for the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Holy Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life, reap life. And so we have to sow into this. This is where it comes into the Scriptures and the, our walk with the Lord, the disciplines of our walk with the Lord. We sow our, in those things into our spirit, and the life of living and walking by the Spirit comes forth. Uh, Ephesians 4, 23 and that you may be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness uh, of the truth. So to be renewed in the spirit, continually renewed in the spirit. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, For this reason I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands, the gift of being the Holy Spirit, talking about. So we need to kindle and keep it fresh. We need to kindle, uh, rekindle that and, and, and ignite that. Uh, and so uh, one more uh, on the positive side. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. We need a daily, regular filling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then there's some negative things, some cautions. Do, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, uh, which you were sealed for the day of redemption. Don't let bitterness and wrath and anger be kind to one another. It goes on uh, there. Uh, do not quench, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not quench the Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Um, Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings, too deep uh, for words. So anyway, I th the point I'm making, I think you may get it by now, is that the foundation for praying in the Holy Spirit is a, a, a lifestyle where you are being led by the Spirit, where the Holy Spirit is being nurtured in, in your spirit on a daily, on a regular basis, a moment-by-moment -moment basis, is being nurtured uh, in your life like that uh, on a regular basis out of a deep relationship with Christ, an ongoing abiding relationship with Christ that includes uh, time in his presence, worship, private worship, uh, the word, uh, meditating on the scriptures and learning and uh, all of those things. So uh, it's, it, it, this foundation, you can't replace it. Uh, it's a lifestyle uh, like that, that from which, uh, from from which the the uh, prayer, spirit-led prayers will, will flow. We'll be in tune with the Holy Spirit, so as to listen and hear and walk with with the Lord. Okay, so that's the foundation for it—a walk with Christ, the inward, the inward Christ within us, the Holy Spirit. Now let's talk about the importance of Holy Spirit-led prayer. Uh, Spirit-led prayer helps us know what to pray. It helps us know what to pray. Um, Romans 8, I read this a minute ago, but Romans 8, in the same way the Spirit helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. That's one of the things that Spirit-led prayer will pray is what to pray. I mean, you know, just look at those four themes that we talked about and the various topics that are involved in those prayer, four prayer themes. And there's a multitude of different topics. So we don't know what's on the Lord's heart, uh, what to pray for. Uh, so it tells us, helps us to know what to pray. Uh, the Spirit-led prayer also helps us to know when to pray. You know, we read that scripture uh, verse from Ephesians 6, 18, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. So this is interesting. 
That word times there is the Greek word keros, K-A-I-R-O-S, keros. There's another word for time, Greek word for time, called chronos. Uh, and, uh, you know, in this scripture verse, it said, pray at all times. That's keros time. In other words, keros is a specific moment in time that has a specific purpose or a specific issue that rises up. Whereas chronos is just time. Our clock runs on chronos time. It just continually runs chronos time. But there are keros moments uh, where times are, are urgent, where something specific rises up. And, and what this verse tells us to do is that we need to be alert chronos time. We need to be alert. We need to pay attention to what's going on chronos time all the time but so that we can pray on those keros moments to pray uh, when the Holy Spirit highlights that. So, so uh, spirit-led prayer helps us know when to pray. Spirit-led prayer also helps us to know how to pray. You know, what to pray is the topic. How to pray is whether I should pray in bold tongues, whether I should pray an apostolic prayer, whatever uh, I need uh, to pray. So spirit-led prayer will give us the sensing of how we need to address this situation. A keros moment arises and we need to pray into a situation uh, and it will tell us what to do. Do we stand uh, having done all stand, do we worship? Uh, do we go to war and battle in the spirit? What do we do? How to pray? Uh, number four, spirit-led prayer helps us uh, to know how much to pray as well. How much to pray. Uh, you know, sometimes we just war and war and war uh, into a particular issue. We pray into a particular issue. And, and rightfully so, because... Sometimes the issues are very, uh, the, the issues are very, very much entrenched and the enemy is entrenched into a situation and just one little prayer is not going to be enough. It takes, <coughs> excuse me, it takes a lot of prayer uh, to pray into those kinds of situations. And so sometimes we have to pray uh, a lot. But then sometimes it comes having done all stand. You know, we've prayed all that we can pray and it comes a time when the Lord is telling us, okay, you prayed through this situation. Maybe the, maybe the uh, issue's not been resolved yet, but you, uh, but you prayed all that you need to pray into this. So you, you go your way or whatever or stop praying. And so the Holy Spirit will tell us how much to pray. So what to pray, when to pray, how to pray, and how much uh, to pray. Uh, so... Very important that we, again, that we learn to pray according to the Holy Spirit uh, so that we can uh, pray effectively in these uh, ways. Okay, now I want to, uh, in this session, section, I want to list, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of water here. I want to uh, identify 11 ways that we can be led by the Holy Spirit to pray and pray. It's really important um, that we see these because what I want to do is I want to demystify where you don't have to have an angelic encounter to be, think you're being led by the Holy Spirit to pray, that you're praying according to the Spirit from a lot of different perspectives. So to, hopefully it'll open you up to a whole new realm of uh, helping uh, to releasing you to pray is led by the Holy Spirit. So uh, let's start. We'll start. We're, we're going to start with the ones that are most obvious, and then we'll move to some that maybe you haven't thought about. Uh, first one, the first way we pray Holy Spirit-led prayers is by praying in tongues. By praying in tongues. First um, Corinthians fourteen fourteen. Paul. There's a really great uh, section of scripture there about all this, but it, Paul says, if I pray in tongue, in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So he's basically saying that praying in tongues is a way of praying 
a spirit-led prayer. It's pretty clear right there. And that's the one that's the, probably the, uh, the, the, the most common way that we connect uh, with that. I, I do want to, I mean, this may not be an issue for anybody that's watching this, but uh, I know it has been in the past for uh, some that we've encountered over the years uh, that praying in tongues uh, in a prayer setting uh, does not require a, an interpretation. You know, if you look at um, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 12, I think it is, 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the need for an interpreter uh, in that whole section there. And that's speaking about the corporate worship service. Yes, I mean, we don't want, if we're uh, having a corporate worship service, we just feel, uh, finish worship and somebody just speaks out loudly in tongues. Uh, we don't want that to happen unless there is an, unless first it's initiated by the Holy Spirit uh, and not our own flesh. And secondly, unless there's interpretation because it's about order. It's about divine order, moving in divine order. But in a prayer meeting, praying in tongues is a tool. It's a tool uh, that we need, a very needed tool, and we don't have to have an interpretation. Sometimes there will be, and that's actually one of the uh, ways we are led by the Spirit is we get an interpretation, but we don't have to have that. Prayer, praying in tongues itself is praying in the Holy Spirit. And if no other reason or no other way comes forth of to pray in the Spirit, praying in tongues is a very important and a very uh, powerful way uh, to pray is led by the Holy Spirit. So the first way that we pray by the Holy Spirit led prayers is praying in tongues. Uh, the second way we, uh, we pray Holy Spirit-led prayer, uh, this again is a simple one that we would understand, is by listening to discern God's direction. Listening to discern uh, God's uh, direction. Uh, you know, we, we pray, we're in the meeting and we're waiting on the Lord. Somebody else may be praying or whatever. And we sense God putting a prayer in our heart or a direction, or a burden, or something like that. So we, we it's almost like, I, I, I want to say here, but it's more than hearing, uh, it's discerning. Because God speaks to us uh, in multiple, in, in all of our spiritual senses, whereas hearing is the ear, uh, seeing is the eye, and uh, Feeling the, those three, and uh, you know, possibly even tasting and smelling, but uh, mostly hearing, seeing, and feeling in the body. And so we may, in one of those three or even more ways, we sense God saying to pray this way. Uh, whether it's we hear a, a, a scripture, we feel a scripture quickening in our in our spirit or whatever it might be, uh, we discern what God is saying to pray into. Now, we don't have to have the exact words, just the thought of the way, the approach. And then we begin to speak, and God gives us whatever words. We just have to trust that as we pray uh, into the area that he's highlighted, that we're praying according to his spirit. Um, uh, so that's the second way. The third way... Uh, we pray Holy Spirit-led prayers is through the interpretation of tongues. And, uh, you know, again, uh, I said we don't have to have an interpretation, but sometimes God will in, you know, give us an interpretation. Now, normally, n not always, but normally it's not like we're all praying in tongues and then somebody will, in a prayer setting, and somebody will stand up and interpret. The Lord says, da-da-da-da-da. That could happen, and that does happen from time to time. But it's more, more likely to be something like this. We're praying in tongues. We're in a corporate setting. We're all praying in tongues. Uh, the prayer leader may say, let's start out by praying in tongues for a while. And we begin to pray in tongues. And as you do that, the Lord will quicken uh, a scripture verse or a prayer theme or a, a direction on where to go so that you can then pray with your mind. Uh, and then, of course, you don't have to pray word for word what you heard. You might, but you could also basically just pray into whatever the interpretation was that the Holy Spirit 
gave you. And that happens quite regularly, really, as you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Uh, you, this uh, begins uh, to happen. And, it, it, you know, it comes from interpreting the, the prayer language, the prayer in tongues that you have prayed. So the fourth way that the Holy Spirit uh, led prayer is by praying with the mind. Okay, the fourth way we pray Holy Spirit led prayers is to pray with the mind. Uh, and we don't want to minimize this. And you think, well, what? that's like everything we do is we pray with the mind. But uh, what I have found is that when we begin uh, to pray just something that's on our heart, and we just begin to pray it, uh, you know, say the prayer leader has said, today we're going to pray for the rising of the corporate man. And, you know, something in your heart may be to pray that we would have a first love relationship with Jesus, that the church would have that. And that just kind of comes to you. And you just begin to pray. Lord, I just pray that, you, you know, you would, just like the church at Ephesus was called to do, that you would give us a first love relationship with Christ, and where there's that's not there, that you would, uh, uh, you know, change the hearts of the people. You know, something along those lines. You're praying strictly from your mind, uh, as what's it was just kind of what was in your your heart. And as you do that, I, I'm, I'm um, it, it's amazing to me what as you begin to do that, uh, the Lord will kind of refine that direction, and it may even take you to a different direction, but it's almost like it's a catalyst. Praying with your mind is a catalyst that stirs you, stirs your spirit, and then he directs you. It may be a different direction that flows out of that, or it may be the same thing. So you know, praying with your mind is a, uh, a simple way uh, that we can begin to pray in the spirit. It's, it, a lot of times it is the praying in the, in the spirit. Other times it's like priming the pump, a catalyst that gives you, leading you to pray uh, by the Holy Spirit. Again, I'm trying to demystify spirit-led prayer so that we can pray with more confidence and boldness that we are connecting with the Holy Spirit. I found this to be the case that God wants you to pray spirit-led prayers more than you do. So if you'll just jump in there, uh, you know, obviously not be way off track. If it's so, the prayer leader may re redirect you. But as you do that, God will lead you into uh, exactly what he wants prayed for that particular uh, time. So praying in the mind. And then the fifth way, which is somewhat like this, is the fifth way of praying Holy Spirit-led prayers is to pray the prayers written in the scriptures, to pray the prayers written in the scriptures. Uh, you know, we, we call them a lot of times apostolic prayers written by the apostles. You know, uh, Paul had a lot of those uh, in Ephesians and uh, Colossians, Philippians, and different places, there are different prayers that Paul prayed uh, that are so powerful. Uh, and you begin to pray these things, uh, even if you don't uh, have anything in your heart or anything in your mind, just begin to pray. You know, Ephesians chapter 1, you know, I pray that the eyes of our heart will be enlightened and opened up, that we might... Uh, you know, know Christ and his inheritance. I, I, I'm butchering the exact text of it, but, but you understand what, what I'm saying. You begin to pray that, and that, again, that serves, and that may be the exact prayer that God wants to pray, but it may be also a catalyst, like the other prayer, a catalyst that would help you to pray uh, other things as the Lord would uh, direct. So, Praying the apostolic prayers, and there's, you know, different people have lists of them, and you can look, see them in the scriptures. There's several in Ephesians. There's Colossians has one at least, and Philippians has at least one, and uh, First or Second Thessalonians has one. So there's, there's quite a few in the New Testament. Uh, uh, you know, J um, John 17 would be one. You know, there are a lot of different uh, ways to pray that way. The sixth way we pray Holy Spirit-led prayers is by asking the Holy Spirit what he wants us to pray for. Asking the Holy Spirit what he wants us to pray for. Um, this is really, uh, if you're a prayer leader, I would really encourage you to do this. This is what, when I lead our corporate group, uh, I try before every session 
uh, to ask the Holy Spirit, okay, what do you want us to pray for tonight? What is the topic that you want us to pray for? And it, who knows what it would be. It could be any number of things. But as we ask, he will, he will be faithful to show. Uh, and, you know, even while you're in a group and we're praying and others are praying, uh, ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what do you want me to pray for? And he'll just, he'll be faithful to give you something that he wants you to pray. So that's a very important way uh, of asking, uh, of spirit-led prayers. Now, the seventh way we pray Holy Spirit-led prayers is by listening as we or others pray. Uh, you know, I sometimes I have a short attention span, and I think a lot of us are like this. And somebody is praying a long prayer, and, you know, I've... Uh, watching I'm in my mind replaying the ball game from yesterday or whatever. And of course, that's not good. But if we listen to what other people are praying, uh, then what happens is uh, God will a lot of times give us words of prayer that will add to what they're praying or supplement it or, or uh, even maybe possibly change to the next topic. Uh, so be listening as other people are praying. This is really an important one, a real simple one. Uh, as we listen, God will speak to us uh, about what to, to pray for. Uh, now, the eighth way that we pray Holy Spirit-led prayers is by sensing a burden from the Lord, sensing a burden from the Lord, and we pray accordingly. Um, this is a major Issue, You know, again, if we're walking with the Lord, like we talked about earlier, uh, and we just uh, sense this burden coming upon us for something in particular, then uh, usually that's what the Lord wants us to pray for. Um, this dealt, Paul dealt with this in Romans 9 through 11. You know, he was praying for Israel. And, you know, if you look at the beginning of chapter 9, you see, uh, you know, how much of a burden he had uh, you know, how much of a burden that, that he had. He said, I'm telling you the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing grief in my heart. For I wish that I myself were a curse separating from Christ for the sake of the brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Now, well, that's a major burden, obviously. He's got this burden... And then in chapter 10, the next chapter, verse 1, he says, Brethren, my heart's desire, you know, his burden, and my prayer to God for them is for their salvation. And so what did he, he had this huge burden, and that burden led him uh, to pray for Israel. And that's, and that's the same with us. When, we get, when God gives us a burden like this, uh, then he will lead us many times as a, to pray uh, into that to for that burden to be uh, released. Um, so that's the eighth way. The ninth way we pray Holy Spirit led prayer is by praying in bold warring tongues. Bold warring tongues. Um, again, uh, our friend Noel Man taught us to do this. Uh, you know, early on we would only pray very. Quietly, what could be shunned to you? You know, very quietly in tongues. Um, and so sometimes there's a time to do this. There's a time to worship in tongues. There's a time to pray quietly in tongues. But there's also a time to pray boldly in tongues. You know, when we're when we're going to war, we're we're it's almost like we're releasing a war cry, a a war war cry to pray in bold, warring tongues. And this is very effective in a in a prayer group. Now. It's hard sometimes to get your people, if you're a prayer leader, to get your people to actually do this because it comes against our our natural mind. And and uh, but it's very very powerful. It, it's a there's a breakthrough in in and of itself to pray spirit led prayers. But it a lot of times will lead to uh, you know a different direction or the next step uh, that goes along that. Especially in times of Real spiritual warfare issues. We pray. We try to pray in bold tongues uh, as much as possible. So that's the ninth way. The tenth way we pray Holy Spirit-led prayers is by praying in Kairos moments. Uh, remember that uh, 
we said the word keros is a strategic time or an opportune time or a specific uh, time. Um, and so, you know, you, you don't have to hear God say, hey, this is a keros moment, pray. I mean, sometimes he might do that, but you don't have to hear that. I mean, if there's, if the world is falling apart with something going on, and there's a burden in your heart about it. It's a Kairos moment. Um, so for example, we, we spent, uh, and I think I've shared this in other sessions, uh, you know, we're in uh, November of 2021 right now, but a year or so ago, about a year, almost exactly a year ago, uh, we felt, and I'm still convinced, that our presidential election was, de was determined, was fraudulently determined. Uh, and so uh, we, we went to prayer. We prayed several nights a week for through November and December and even some into January. Uh, and it was a real prayer assignment for our church. Now, that was a Kairos moment in our nation. Uh, and so we believe that Kairos moment motivated us to pray as led by the Spirit to pray into that. Now, the Carol's moment didn't tell us every little topic to pray for. A lot of the news reports and different things gave us insight into it as well as the Holy Spirit speaking to us. But the Carol's moment motivated us to pray into that spirit, uh, that issue. So we pray spirit-led prayers as determined by Carol's moments. Now, the 11th way, this is the last one. The 11th way we pray Holy Spirit-led prayers is by following the direction of the prayer leader by following the direction of the prayer leader. Now, if we're in a corporate setting, and not everybody will be, but if we're in a corporate setting, uh, the prayer leader will normally say, tonight we're going to pray for da-da-da-da-da, whatever it may be. And so if when that happens, we need to follow, you know, lead, of course, a lot of times what will happen is that'll be the first topic you pray for, and then other things will come forth throughout the night or throughout the time of the prayer meeting. But you need to follow that leading. So you pray by the Spirit because the prayer leader has probably waited on the Lord and he's gotten the direction from the Lord as to what the prayer topic and the direction that the Lord wants to follow during that day. And so you follow into that and you're you, you follow his leadership or her leadership and you're praying uh, as Spirit-led prayers. Uh, so hopefully those 11 different ways, I've kind of gone through them quickly, uh, but most of them are pretty simple. I didn't need too much explanation to them. So hopefully I, I want to just challenge you to uh, go back and read the notes and uh, get those in your heart and, because I want, I want to just expand in your understanding how you can pray spirit-led prayers. So important that you're not bound up, that I have to really have an angel appear to me or hear an audible voice of the Lord or, or whatever the issue was in order to voice a prayer. Uh, that you can do it, uh, you know, just any one of those ways will generally, almost always, lead you to pray uh, spirit-led prayer. So to demystify it uh, and to empower you uh, to, be, to pray is prayers is led by the Holy Spirit. That that is what will uh, help us fill the golden bowls of incense before the heavenly golden altar. Now I want to just pray for you as we close. I want to pray for you that God will just release an anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, whether you're here or whether you're watching online or uh, part of the Forerunner School, however you're encountering this session. Just receive this. I, I believe God will just release in you a, a deeper ability to be led of the Spirit and to walk by the Spirit. So let's pray. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And as your Holy Spirit empowers us, we pray, Father, that there would be a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all who watch this, listen to this, read these notes. To expand our understanding, Lord, of what it means to be led by the Holy Spirit to pray. To demystify it, Lord. 
to make us bold intercessors so that we don't miss our day of visitation, our call as intercessors, so we don't miss it, Lord. So we pray, Father, for a release of the Holy Spirit, a sealing of the Holy Spirit, an empowerment of the Holy Spirit, a fresh kindling of the Holy Spirit, all that is needed so that your people can be equipped in a greater, greater way to pray as led by the Holy Spirit. And we pray those things in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.